I guess I'll start with this. Never be diverted from the truth by what you would like to believe. Did y'all hear that? Never be diverted from the truth by what you would like to believe. I was uh, thinking, you know, refreshing and getting thoughts together yesterday. And I, it came to me, and Pastor Micah's message and my last message and the messages that have been happening in the Friday night Bible study. And I said, you know what? We've become myth busters. Y'all watch the show? I said, we've become myth busters trying to bust the myths in religion and Christianity with the truth. And so a lot of doctrine is based on what people would like to believe versus the truth. So they've been diverted, and Paul talks a lot about being deceived. So they've been deceived, continue to pray for them, continue for those of us that have uh, friends or loved ones that are in mainstream Christianity to continue to speak to them. You know, not just the the lost, but those that haven't accepted Yahshua, but those that are like on their way to hell by deception. You know, that part-time servant. Now, I want you to know that part-time servant is for real on our half, on our part. See, on our part, I can look around and say, oh, they only do things halfway. There is no part-time servant with Yahweh. You either are or you're not. So, you know, when we did the sold out, you either are or you're not. You know, on our end, we'll look and say, well, I probably should do better. You really need to really think about that because there's, as Sister Denise talked about that, that make-believe wall, you know, you're either on this side or that side, and we consider straddling our the fence it doesn't exist and obviously it doesn't exist because Yahweh said if you're that or that you're no good to me I only like hot so there's no part-time servanthood if you're not sold out on fire for Yahweh you're nothing so that thus the scripture tells me to constantly be under self-examination I say all that to say, uh, we're going to talk about liberty. We're going to bust a myth about liberty. You know, I'm at liberty. I'm free. I'm at liberty. I can do whatever I want. And it seems like some of the scriptures say that. Kind of like with the Friday night study. Seems like I don't have to keep the law anymore. I can pull out scriptures that if I just pull out that scripture, that's exactly what it says. But I took it out all, all out of context and stuff. So we do the same thing with this liberty. You know, everybody's heard of all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient, which means it's okay for me to do whatever I want. Some stuff's not just beneficial, but I can still do whatever I want. I want you to know that's not the whole verse. Another one says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Messiah hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The law is bondage. All this have to do's and can't do's, and I don't want to do's. Bondage. See, he told me that, stand fast in my liberty. Don't give it up for nobody because Messiah called me to it. He made me free and then told me not to be entangled with that yoke of bondage. Or what about, for brethren, you have been called unto liberty. It's your calling, right? Again, not the whole verse. So I'm going to start, we'll go back to the first one, which was Colossians 6, 12. And we want to look at these. So Paul says here, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. 
Then he says, all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Okay, so we didn't finish the scripture. I will not be brought under the power of any. Now, for those who are familiar with this sixth chapter, he obviously cannot possibly mean that it's okay for me to do whatever I want. Yes, it may not be beneficial, but it's still all right. Because he started in verse 9. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. So if you're unrighteous, you don't get into the kingdom. And then he says, be not deceived. What did he say then? He said, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Elohim. And such were some of you. Yes, we was. But you're washed, sanctified. But you are justified in the name of the Master, Yeshua, and by the Spirit of our Elohim. Then he says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. And then they stop. But how about let's pick up verse 13. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats. But Yahweh shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for Yahweh and Yahweh for the body. Paul is saying, it is true. You can do whatever you want. Just like food is for the belly. But guess what? Yahweh going to destroy them both. It isn't the card to say I can do whatever I want and I'm okay. It's, yeah, you can do whatever you want with consequence. That's what he's saying here. Because he just said, don't be deceived. These people are not in the kingdom. And he's talking to regular folk, and he knows some of you, just like some of us, just like me, was some of them. But I'm not anymore, see, which you were, past tense. You you threw it away. You got rid of it because you've been bought with a price and sanctified, set apart from those wicked deeds and to the goodness and graciousness of Father Yahweh. So, you know, again... Bust a myth. It's a myth. To Galatians. I know I usually write out the scripture, but I didn't this time. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. And we might as well add 14 on there because I'm going to just bring 14 in. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So Paul is saying... Uh, brethren, we've been, you've been called to liberty, but don't use your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. But by love, serve one another. Now, y'all should get like, wait a minute, am I free or servant? He, he said both in the same, I'm, I'm at liberty, but I'm a servant. I, I can be both? Really? That doesn't sound like it could be both. So let's break down some words. Occasion, you know, only use not liberty for an occasion, which is a starting point. That is an opportunity. Don't use your liberty as an opportunity to the flesh, to the body. But by love, serve, and that serve means to be a slave, the ISV version says, you, for you, brethren, were called to freedom. 
Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity to gratify your flesh, but through love make it your habit to serve one another. For the whole law is summarized in a single statement. You must love your neighbor as yourself. Now, both of these were written by Paul, both Corinthians and Galatians, written by the same person, Paul. He said the same thing in both places. That's what he's saying. Remember, he started, he said, be not deceived. These are not in the kingdom. Some of you were, but now we're not because of the wonderfulness of Yeshua. And then he goes on to say, but don't, you know, yeah, true. You can do whatever you want, but you'll be destroyed. He's saying the same thing here. You were called to freedom, only don't use your freedom as an opportunity to gratify your flesh. Now that you've been set free, don't start thinking that you can now begin to gratify your flesh. But through love, make it your habit to serve one another. So Yahweh sets you free to enslave you. Oh, my goodness. I mean, isn't that what Paul said? I mean, he starts every single letter. A prisoner, a slave, a servant... I mean, he never says, the free and at liberty, the prisoner of Yahshua, the slave of the Most High, the servant. Never once did he say, I am at liberty, the one at liberty who can do whatever I want, says unto you. Not once. Why? Because we were called to liberty to become a slave. I always think of, um, in case anybody doesn't know, which might be some of the young people. You know, Yahweh, when he set up the, the nation of Israel, he had these fabulous rules. I mean, these laws were, kept everybody like going forward. So even when you, whether for, you know, if you were a farmer and it was drought, therefore you weren't going to get many crops, and you had, became impoverished, you know, poor because of it, and you had to, to do, you know, to deal with that, you sold yourself into slavery to your fellow brethren. So you were like going to work, like we go to work, we're enslaved. Okay, so you were enslaved to this person, and they, you know, took care of you. So after a certain period of time on that, the seventh year Sabbath, they had to be released. You had to be released. And so there were times where if, because, you know, maybe you had the person you sold yourself to was such a good master or boss, whatever terminology you want to use, keep it current, so good to you, you didn't want to leave. You're like, man, this is, I can't even on my own be like this. This this is some good stuff here. What you had to do was then pierce your ear, wear a gold ring in your ear. And what that did was it let everybody know because he'd be in trouble if he didn't let you be released. So let everybody know that you made the decision to stay. And so when I think about that, I think what great honor it gives to that man of how good of a man he is that you decided to stay enslaved to him. That's how I think of our relationship with Yeshua. You know, I was really messed up, impoverished in spirit, you know, out there. And so I sold myself. I, you can have all of me. Take all of me. And I'm treated so well. I don't want to leave. I wear the mark so that everybody knows I am a servant to a good master. One who takes very, very good care of me. Meets all my needs. So you have to meet all your needs in order to, for you to stay. So we're set free to be enslaved. Where this thought of liberty comes from. I don't know. It's a myth. 
Let's go into another scripture because I'm not going to be long up here today. Let's go into another scripture, 1 Peter 2.16. And I, I kind of did just jump into the middle of this chapter here. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16. But this is what everybody else does, right? As free and not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness. But as the servants of Elohim. See, I told you we're free to be a servant. My choice. See, I, I'm choosing to be a servant. Here's another myth that I'll just throw out there so that you all can get this myth. You are not your own master. You never can be, never will be. Either under the devil or under Yahweh. It just, this is this is it. You don't get to stand and say, well, I was doing things my own way. No, you weren't. There is no your own way. That's a myth. Can't serve two masters. There's only two. And we're all, and when I say all, I'm talking about all of mankind, subservient to one or the other. To one or the other. The devil have you thinking you're free when you're not. When you're not. So that's a myth. You, you, you know, so just forget that one. So here Peter is saying, you know, as free. But he, let, you know, let's, I did, like I said, jump in the middle. Uh, let's see. We'll start at verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for Yahweh's sake. Uh, obey the magistrates, follow the stop signs, you know, speed limits, don't rob the banks. Uh, Submit yourself to every ordinance of man for Yahweh's sake, as unto Yahweh, whether it be to a king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evil doers and for the praise of them that do well. The, your government, your local government, submit to them. For so is the will of Yahweh that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So by our well-doing, we silence those that would speak against us. As free, see, and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of Elohim. See, we're under the magistrates, the laws of the land, out of obedience to Yahweh, but we don't serve them. We're under Yahweh. This is what he's saying. So, but he says this cloak is a covering that is a pretext, which is false appearance. So he says, as free, you know, you're free, you subject yourself to this system, you're free, but don't use your liberty as a covering or a pretext, a false appearance for maliciousness, which is badness, that is corruption, trouble. Like, don't go causing trouble, you know, because you're free. And the servant, of course, is a slave. And this free that he started here with is unrestrained. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm free to come and go as I please. Like, I'm not, you know, if you're a slave, you don't get to do that. You don't get to leave the plantation and go to down the street and visit the neighbor without permission. You don't just get to leave. This free means that, means I can come and go as I please. I don't answer to anybody in that sense. So you're a citizen, not a slave. Now, you also would have to go back and understand how Rome was back in the day. And if you were a citizen, there were certain perks of being a citizen versus someone who was a non-citizen. Thus, we see with Paul, he makes his claim, 
you can't treat me like this because I'm a Roman citizen. So I appeal to the higher court. And he could do that because, yes, he was a Jew, but he was a Roman citizen. So he had certain rights that other people didn't have. And that's what he's, Peter's talking about. He's talking about this, you're free you're, as a citizen. You're not enslaved. You're a citizen. Like, you know, let's look at our country. And, I, and hopefully y'all feel you're free. Y'all feel you're free, right? You don't feel like you're in Russia or in some communist country. You have liberties here. I mean, this is one of the things that everybody wants to come here for. Why? Because we've got liberties. We can come and go as we please. Pick what jobs we want. Pick what schools we want to go to. That's liberty. And, that's what, and we get to do this as a citizen. You know, and if you're not, don't have, you know, you're from a foreign country, you might live here. But if you don't have citizenship, there are certain things you cannot do. But as a citizen, I'm capable of doing it. So that's, this is what Peter's talking about. So because you're a citizen and have these liberties, don't use them for, you know, don't fake it. You know, don't give this false pretense, you know, and cause trouble and stir up evil. And this liberty does mean freedom. So you're a, a citizen, and since you're a citizen, don't use your freedom, you know, to stir up trouble, which, you know, as believers, we have to be very careful about. You know, when there's certain protests, I mean, that's part of our liberty. But we have to watch who we associate ourselves with. Let me use the example of, like, the people who will be protesting the anti-abortionist. Yes, we agree with them. But some of their tactics of violence, we can't attach ourselves to that. Because that's what he's saying here. Don't go into evil. Don't use your liberty. I can stand and voice... And, you know, that you shouldn't be doing this, but I need to do it in a way that's not malicious. So when we have these rights, we have to watch who we're attaching ourselves to who might feel the same way when we're dealing with uh, worldly alcohol politics out there. Same thing if you're involved in the PTA and they're arguing about curriculum and stuff. You want to watch you know, that, that's fine and good, but you want to watch that you're not attaching yourself to people that are going to be malicious, that are to try to accomplish their deeds. That's what Peter's talking about here. See, he's not talking about, I could do whatever I want. He's talking, because that's what he's talking about. If you read up, he's talking about the government. Submit yourself to this government that you're under. This is the context of what he's saying. And, and um, I think this is an ISV version. Live like free people and do not use your freedom as an excuse for doing evil. Instead, be Yahweh's servant. So don't be out here and in getting involved. Yes, the bottom line is something Yahweh would be for, but you're uh, aligning yourself up with people that are malicious or going to use violence, things that are contrary. Instead, be a servant of Yahweh's. So we want to do things the way that Yahweh would have us to do things. So now, what is it that if I, I mean, because the scripture talks often about this liberty. So, well, if I'm not at liberty to do anything I want and still maintain. Isn't that what it means when Paul says, you know, oh, you could just, your works will get tried in the fire and whatever burns up, but you'll be saved. That's what it says. But that's not what he's saying. You know, he's talking about things that you do, things that we do in life. Some of our stuff is a little foolish. It doesn't really count towards the kingdom. You know, that might get burned up. 
But it's not talking about you doing whatever you want to do. It's not talking about sin because Paul's very clear about that. Oftentimes he talks about don't be deceived. So, of course, when I read that, I said, Paul's had, you know, these issues been around for a long time. People been in the church, thieves and fornicators and FM, all these folk been trying to be in the church. Everybody want to be in the church. And nobody wants to get on the straight and narrow. You know, because this Paul's talking, if he's got to tell them, don't be deceived, you know, 2,000 years ago, because these people were in the church faking it, you know, pretending, claiming salvation, but keeping their wicked lifestyles. Paul's like, you all deceived. Let me set you all straight. This is not in the kingdom. Also, you can find the list in Revelation. You know, in Revelation, it's the same list. There's no idolaters, fornicators, thieves, or liars. Same list. And that's from John, who had the revelation of the kingdom. And he could see firsthand, wow, ain't none of them here. They ain't here. So what is it that I have liberty from? You know, what is it? I mean, I obviously have some liberty, but from what? You know, this is where the big problem comes in. Because I want to think that I was good before I came in or I had a little bit of dysfunctionalism, but it's all good I want to think that I had a little bit of problems, but on the whole, I was okay. So I'm not really receiving all that Yahweh has for me, but I want that prosperity message. I want that or that, you know, you go shopping. I want that, and I really am not all that bad. So they come in. Not being changed, keeping all that they had, because nobody was telling them, you're a sinner. Not dysfunctional, not have a little bit of problems. There's a big difference in the verbiage. You know, we've tried because nobody wants to be called a sinner. And Sister Denise say how offensive <laughs> Called, told him he was a sinner, and he was like, oh, not me. We don't want to hear it, but, you know, we're all ready to claim I'm dysfunctional. I got a little bit of problems, but nobody wants to be labeled a sinner. Sorry, that's what we all are, all of mankind, sinner, 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 all going to hell. But Yahweh made a way. What we need to realize is sin is burdensome and weighty. Did you hear me? Sin is burdensome and weighty. We have been set at liberty from this load. Pilgrim's Progress. All of this weight of the world, Brother Mark's song, you think you can carry the weight of the world. Well, we did. We we did think that, and we were carrying it. And when we come to Yahshua, we're set free at liberty from what? Sin, the weight of it, the consequence of it. The condemnation and the guilt of it. All of that is weighty, impressive, bondage. That's what I've been set at liberty from. I've been set at liberty from that completely. And the scripture bears that out. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are walking in Yeshua. Following after his footsteps, following where he leads, I'm at liberty. 
But what's my liberty do? I mean, because this liberty is so fantastic. I've been set free from the weight of this world. It's like somebody who, you know, just endowed you with some fabulous, fabulous gift. And now you're awestruck and all you want to do is follow them around and, you know, and admire them and tell everybody, you know, so-and-so gave me and it was so wonderful, so wonderful. Just want to tell everybody, this is what Yeshua has done for us. Yeah. See, we're at liberty. The, the, the bondage, the condemnation, the guilt of all that I have done is cleansed. It's washed away. And I'm free. Completely free. So I stand today when new problems come. Might not be sin, but they could cause me to think of sin. You know, I, I gotta pay this bill. I ain't got no money. And what can I do? If I claim this other child on my taxes, I'll get more money. If I do this, I can do that. Um, my friend said, you know, just hold this for him and he'll give me a hundred dollars. All sin. You know, the burden of paying the bill wasn't sin. But it made me jump right into sin mode. You know, I don't know if it happens as much anymore because I'm far removed. But back in the day, the girls set their eyes on a guy. And you know what we did? Put it all out there. Wanted them to have it. He could have it. Hoping there was a baby coming. Bam, I got me my man. There was nothing wrong with... He seems like a fine gentleman. He's got money. Nothing wrong with that. But sin just went, do it the sinful way. And it just puts all that condemnation back on me and all that. Again, I don't know if they're doing that today. I'm far removed from that. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. But you don't want to go into that because that's bondage. You know, you might think it's liberty, but it's bondage. So you're already at liberty. Stick with the ways of Yahweh. And that's where our liberty lies in him, with him, being sold as a servant unto him. I have liberty. You know, he provides for me. I don't have to worry Um, It's a stress-free life. Now, that doesn't mean stuff doesn't happen. It does. And when it does happen, my first reaction sometimes is stress mode. But when I think of the things of Yahweh and how he provided here and he provided here and he made a way out of here, I can say, you know what, burden, I'm free And I can cast it aside. See, it's not the one-time deal. Like just that salvation and all my sin. He said, cast your burdens on him. Why? Because he cares for you. It's not for any other reason. I care about you. So cast your burdens, burdens, on to me. Like, I don't want you to be weighted down. You need to be free. I come to give you liberty. And this is also what Yeshua meant when the truth will set you free. It's not just spiritual. It's all that is you. We're at liberty. And it's a tremendous liberty. Those that have been in other countries who have experienced the limited freedom or the complete bondage, love this country. Those that are here, what do we do? Take it for granted. Like it's a given. Don't think you don't treat Yahweh's freedom the same way. It's like a given. And those that newly come in, they're like, man, this is great. And you're like, yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's okay. But we've been set free. Free to worship him. 
See, there's a whole purpose. Yahweh just didn't set you free and say, now you could go do whatever you want. Well, that's what the heck I've been set free from. That doing whatever I wanted burdened me down. Got me guilty, condemned, and everything else. Why would you want to go back there? That was the bondage. But look at the Israel coming up out of Egypt. Bondage. They were enslaved. And they're out, and instead of appreciating their liberty and their freedom, I want to go back to Egypt. Do not think we are any different. We have this wonderful liberty in Yahweh, and we want to go back to bondage. Now, those of us, you know, when we're looking and we're reading this, and we're, you know, because they had the leaks in it, and I think Sister Denise has at one time said, they forgot all the rest. Like, they forgot the, the heavy labor and the, the work and the work schedule and, you know, the abuse and all that just for some leaks. Selling your soul for some leaks. What are you selling your soul for? A little bit more money? For a man, for a woman? What are you selling your soul for? What, what are you looking back and saying, I want to go back into the bondage because of, because you forgot the bondage. You forgot the heartache and the hardship and the pain and the distress, the uncertainty of tomorrow. I may physically be unaware of my certainty of tomorrow in this, like, physical. Like, I may not be here tomorrow. But as far as tomorrow, meaning the future, oh, that's short up. Short up. I know exactly where I'm going. Today, right now, at least. No, exactly. It's shored up because I serve a good God, and I'm free. I'm free to praise him. I'm free to talk about him. I'm free, and that's the liberty that we've been called to, not the liberty to do whatever you want, and Yahweh just has to accept it. What kind of God is that? Because I don't want that God I want the God that has a standard and maybe sometimes hard for me to reach up to, but I don't want him to lower it even for me or for my children because that will alter who he is. And I need him to be just who he is. I need, I need him. You understand? I need him to be just who he is. So do not cast your liberty aside because truly you are free in Yeshua. Don't be looking back, thinking that back there was better. Look at Lot's wife. Oh, well, can't look at her for long. She had a yearning for the back there, and she turned around. Yeshua says, anyone who puts his hand to the plow and turns and looks back, is not worthy. Because Yahweh wants you to appreciate the liberty that you have in him. Know you are free if you're in him. If you're not in him, and there's no part-time servant, there's no fence, if you're not in him, you're in bondage. Even if you don't feel it now, you will because it's bondage. And at some point, you're going to want the freedom, but you never know when it's your last. Yahweh commands us not to play with him. Don't, he don't play. So again, the scripture tells me it's self-examination. Am I sold out? Am I longing for bondage again? Or do I appreciate the freedom that I have in being a servant 
to my God. Amen.